Hello and welcome to I Am with Eric Faria. Today it is my pleasure to have here with me Ivoni Maya, who is a... How can I say? You're, you're so many things, I don't even know how to describe you. <laughs> but definitely you are a physical trainer. Right? Yeah, we can say that. You can you work with people. I do. Right? Yeah. yeah. You you coach them. Yes. You have coached me yes. before exactly. in the past. I yes. remember that. Yes. So how are you, Ivani? I'm um, very well and happy to be here. Thank oh. you for the opportunity. My pleasure, my pleasure. Um, we did a show about four years ago here for LMC TV, a different kind of show. So it was like you and your daughter at the time, right? So mm -hmm. people, some people might recognize you from that. <laughs> so, uh, but today I want to talk about your story. So why don't you let us know a little bit about your life story, Before where you started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm from Brazil. I was born in Belo Horizonte. At five, I was in Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. I grew up in the favelas, the slums of Sao Paulo, until the age of 17, 18, I was still in the slums. Wow. Worked as a housekeeper, babysitter, worked in a, a factory. Took myself to college, paying, selling sandwiches. Um, I am um, a martial arts as well. Mm -hmm. So I was training people in martial arts but also babysitting, I believe I already said that. Yeah, yeah, but it's okay because they were listening. Training yeah. as well um, and selling sandwiches. Yeah. So did, went to college, mm -hmm. started physical education. Right. Worked in gyms in Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, the big gyms in Brazil. Um, here in America, especially in New York, I was doing massage therapy. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, I sold flowers, actually. I started selling flowers at the corners of um, Queens. Wow. Yes. My, I did not know about that. Yes. <laughs> I sold flowers at uh -huh. the corners of, of Queens the month of November and December. Uh. Very cold. People only bought because I think they wanted to help me. <laughs> yeah. Because the flowers were really miserable. They were <laughs> bad. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Then I started training people at the beginning. I was charging $10 for the month because I really <laughs> wanted to do what right. I was meant to. So Which yeah, is, you just uh, wanted to get people. people, yeah. Yes. Um, then I was training people, doing massages. It started with Colonics 2001. Uh -huh. uh, w did uh, nutrition through the Teachers Columbia mm -hmm. uh, College, Teachers College Columbia. Yeah. And did uh, nutrition there. Still doing my continuing education. Right. And now I compete with kettlebell, do marathons, is um, yeah. the, my lifestyle. Yeah, you're, you're like, <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's, uh, and I live life. Right, very important. Yes. Yes, and we haven't even talked about like, you were married, you adopted kids. Well, actually not really kids, they were teenagers, 13, right? 13 and 15, exactly. So you adopted, they are biological siblings. Yes, they are. Yeah, so 13 and 15, mm -hmm. that's how old they were when yes, you adopted them. exactly. And today they are how old? Now Rosilene is 21 years old and Leandro is 23 years old. Wow, amazing. Yeah. So like young people, right? Mm -hmm. Young woman and a young man. Very well uh, respectable, they are doing very well. Mm -hmm. Leandro is in college right now. He's doing master, his master's. Wow. Rosilene is on her last year of college. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And um, so what do you think was the, the, the one thing that allowed you to go from the slums of Sao Paulo to actually being your own your own woman in every sense, right? You are a businesswoman, you are a mother, you have been married, you do competitions, you do marathons. So what do you think is the one thing that allowed you to do the, you all can, these things? Yeah, you can say I'm stubborn. And <laughs> you are stubborn. Because if you say I cannot do something, I will prove you wrong. If you say I can do something, I want to make you proud. So either way, is a win-win situation. Wow. 
be in the slums um, and f living with a mother that had to do just everything by herself to raise two children. Right. My father was in jail earlier the, uh, on when my mother was still with him. Mm -hmm. And there was really no other way. You either go wrong or you, go, you on my case, yeah. I would say you either go right or you go right. Yeah. There is so no I didn't option. want to follow the path of my family. Right. I come from a very sick DNA, and I didn't want to follow that path. But it, that, as being young, I would say it was unconscious. Mm -hmm. As I grew older, was I wanted to make that happen. Right. I want to be better than the path my family went either because it was hard for them, but I believe I can make it happen. Mm -hmm. And I still think, I always thought I was invincible. Nobody is, but having that mentality helped me mm -hmm. to go through. Mm -hmm. And I cannot even say that I pushed through, even though yeah, that's exactly what I did, mm -hmm. but I was not thinking of that. I was just doing my steps every day and wanting to get better. Right. Yeah. So that's fantastic, first of all. So like, did you have anybody that was helping you or is it, was it just you? Where do you think this thing came from? Well, everybody actually helped me. My mother not being able to have a great life mm -hmm. in a way helped me because I didn't want to have what she had. Right. Um, the people that was trying because I also was sexually abused when I was young right. and those people I used them as my teachers because I could not allow that to keep on happening yeah um, going put, taking myself to college also because I didn't want to be the one that didn't have the knowledge even though we never have we are never going to have the whole knowledge right. but I didn't want I wanted to know that little bit, whatever that little bit was. Right. Yes. And as to what I do today is something that I always wanted to do. Uh -huh. I was born overweight. Overweight not because I had a lot of food, but because being poor, we had, uh, we ate in Brazil, we call Priá, is on the family of the, the squirrels or the rats. Oh my goodness, yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, Tanajura is an uh, 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 ant yes. with a big butt. <laughs> <laughs> so you would fry that to eat. Lots of dandelion, because grows anywhere, is a weed. Right, right, right. And cornmeal. So you, we grew up eating right. those things. Wow. Yeah. And, well, but it was I'm delicious. I liked yes, it. Yes, yeah, of course. <laughs> when you don't have anything else, right. you you're, loved it. And you, you're glad that you actually have something. Oh, yeah, right? well, I did not even think I didn't yeah, have course, anything. But then, then yes. later, yes, was embarrassing right. to have those type of food that I had, that yeah. I grew up eating. Yeah. And then going to school with the only color that I don't like, which is pink. Because <laughs> bring bad memories. Yeah, well. <laughs> yes, and you had to put pink for me. Because <laughs> uh, I had this pink dress, oh. and my mother had to wash the dress. Yeah. And was all, um, she had to sew the dress and yeah. had holes and everywhere. To try to keep it like yes. yeah. in shape so you could actually yeah. wear it. Yeah, and I was that one that was the landmark. Uh, where are you going? You see the black fat lady there. So I didn't want to be the, the landmark. Right. So in, I started to make changes, but not because I knew what I, what I was doing, but yeah. was, uh, I was ashamed to be living in Islam mm -hmm. as I grew up. I was ashamed to be living the life I was living. Right. So you wanted to break that cycle. Yes. And yeah. and I, I, I'm not going to say that I knew because I really did not know I could break that cycle. But I did whatever I could to break that cycle. Take myself to college, work as a babysitter, housekeeper, mm -hmm. selling sandwich at college so I could 
be able to help to pay my college, for right. my college. So everybody who helped me, everybody helped me. Uh, everybody was my teachers yeah. because I didn't want to be like that or to be the the landmark. Right, for, like the, the different the, one. Yes, yes. yes. So, and to prove them wrong, mm -hmm. I wanted to make everything different. This is amazing. I'm going to stop here for this segment. <laughs> but we will be back after this with so much more. And trust me, Ivani has a lot of stories. So <laughs> stick with us. We will come back right after this. Hello and welcome back to I Am with Eric Faria. Today it is my pleasure to have here with me Ivani Maya and I just want to continue this conversation because we have <laughs> so much to talk about. So you were telling me how you went from uh, working at gyms here in the United States to actually having your own clients. So can you tell me how that transition happened for you? Yeah, so I was working in a gym in New York, in mm -hmm. Manhattan. Uh, and I started, little by little, people started to talk with me about doing individualized training. Sure. And at the gym, you have to follow the, the gym structure. Mm -hmm. I wanted to offer more quality. So little by little, I started to leave the gym. Mm -hmm. I started with two clients and all of a sudden, uh, word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And I was out totally 2000. And, Five, 2006, I was not working for uh, gym anymore. I was working for myself. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, and, and how do you think that people continue to look for you? Just word of mouth? They just it knew is, about your, your work and then? It, um, all my, when I started, yeah. one client would, talk, would introduce me to their friends. Oh, oh okay. my friend needs a trainer. And they started to send me to their friends. Same thing with the body work and everything else that I do. Yeah. And ended up being a word of mouth. Yeah. Um, I, there's a few doctors who send clients to me. Yes. And I know you have some very famous clients that we, we will not name, but yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, so they send people to me. I would say today 90% of my business is through those doctors that send um, people to me. Wow. Yes. Yeah, just to mention people, Ivani works with like models, NBA players, you know, musicians, singers. So yeah, it's a, it's a very <laughs> starry group of people. So, um, and where do you think the motivation for you to actually continue to become a better person and to be physically fit, where does that motivation come from, Ivani? I believe is the fact that I... Um, I came from being unhealthy and was heavy and was not a happy place. And now being healthy is a happy place. Mm. It feels good because I have energy. Mm. Okay. I can look at myself yeah. and I like what I see. Sure. And I don't, I, I don't waste time being sick. So the time I would waste being sick, I can enjoy life. I can do more things for me. People, just recently somebody said, when after 40s, everything starts to hurt. Uh -huh. And it's not true uh -huh. if you are moving. Right. And that's what happens to me. At 50, I can't wait so I can get to my 60s. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yeah. I'm already counting 10, year, 10 years from now, yeah. I'll be 60. And I want to be better than the way I am now. Because wow. I have way more energy. I will have way more energy. And that is how I think it should be. Uh -huh. I don't want to be like the other people that um, I am on my 30s, but they are already falling apart. The back hurts. Yeah. The joints start to hurt. Everything starts to stop. Sure. And it should not be like that. Mm -hmm. We should keep going up, not down. So my motivation, I want to keep going up. While I'm on this earth, yeah. I want to be functional totally functional. That's amazing. First of all, you do not look 50. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to say that. Um, and yeah, the, the whole thing that you said, it just makes so much sense because 
I never understood why people would say, oh, so-and-so is an old person, an old man or an old woman, and like that's normal, they're sick, that's normal because they're old. And I'm like, what is the, the relation between being old and being sick? Where do we get that idea from? Yes, it's a, a tribal. So if you are old, automatically you are falling apart. Yes. You have no value, which yeah. is not true. Yeah. So I don't want to be part of a tribe. Mm -hmm. I want to be in the other side. Yeah. Being, having more numbers, but feeling better. Right. The numbers that I have uh -huh. should not make me feel older. Right. Because now I should have more knowledge than I had before. Yeah, than when you were like 20 or exactly. 30 or 40. Yes. Yeah. So now um, that I have more knowledge, I should be wiser to know how to uh, dive into life and get better. Right. So my motivation, I want to just keep enjoying life. How can I enjoy life if I just um, start to, I'm old, I'm 50. Uh -huh. There's way more out there right. for me to explore. Yeah, and, and like, I, imagine if you live up to 100, right? You have 50 more years to live. I might as well have the health I have today <laughs> yeah. or better right. because I have 50 years to enjoy. Right, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So what would you say, Ivani, to people who are not motivated, who want to change, right? Who want to become physically fit, who are maybe they, they look at themselves and their bodies and their energy and they see that they are not where they want to be. What would you say is the first step for these people? The first step is to really get started. And, and you ask for motivation. Are you happy the way you are? If you are happy the way you are, then there's nothing for you to change. But if you look at the mirror, and you, now you have to look for a clothes that will hide your body. You are not happy. Mm. If you don't take yourself to the beach <laughs> 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 yeah. because you don't look good in your body. If you don't look good naked, you, 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 you might as well do something. So just take your clothes, look at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> yes. If For you're a lot not of people, happy, that's difficult. Yeah. That should be the motivation. Yeah. Wait a minute. I look at my body. I don't like everything starts to sag. What can I do <laughs> to get better? Right. If you have kids, you want to keep up with your kids. How are you going to keep up with, with your right. kids? That Especially should be your motivation right yeah. there. Yeah. Look at, at your uh, parents. Mm -hmm. How are they doing? That should be your motivation. If they are falling apart, they should, you should use their motivation. That's how you want to look five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now. Mm -hmm. Just start to look around your friends. How do they look like? Just recently, I, w I met friends in Brazil who used to mock me because I was the fat um, and the ugliest mm -hmm. and the poorest right. in Brazil. So I met my friends and I went wanting to just laugh at them. I could not make, I could not do that. Mm. I, I felt their pain oh. because they, they are not healthy, they are not happy. Yeah. And for them, they already got married, which happened to me too. Right, but right, right. because you got married and you have kids, it doesn't mean life stops. Right, life quite the opposite, exactly. right? Exactly. Life is just starting. Because how are you going to be a good example for your kids? Yeah. You might as well take care of yourself. Get motivation from a positive or negative. If you look at the mirror, you don't like what you see, that should be your motivation. Make a goal for yourself uh, and start to do little steps. You don't need to do big steps. There's mm. no need. Even if the first step is, I don't drink enough water, start with a cup of water. Right. Mm. That's simple, yeah. Yeah. How many people are constantly dehydrated? Just Because they don't drink enough water. water. Exactly. Just start with a cup of water. So for this week, and don't do too much too soon. For this week, start with the water. Next week, you may decide, okay, I'm going to drop the soda, mm -hmm. not drop totally, but yeah. you can do little by little. Instead right. of two cups, have a cup and a half, little by little. You don't need to sacrifice. Find motivation on everything. And even if you are not too concerned about 
your body because right. m for a lot of people that's not what it is. Mm. But do you really want to spend money going to the doctor? Do mm. you really want to spend your time going to the doctor? Use mm. that money and that time to do something for you, for yourself. Right. Either to travel. I love traveling. Mm -hmm. So I want to be healthy because I'm, I, I need to go around and see the world. Twice a year, I want to go overseas mm -hmm. where I have never been. Right. I do, that, that's my motivation. Yeah. I need to be healthy. This is amazing. <laughs> You're like a spark of enthusiasm and energy, and that's why I love talking to you. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I'll let our viewers catch their breath, get some water <laughs> if they're dehydrated, right? And um, yeah, we will be back right after this, more with Ivani. So if you like this conversation, just stick with us, and we'll be back after this break. And welcome back to I Am with Eric Faria. I'm here once again with Ivani Maya. And Ivani, I wanted to ask you about a subject that you are familiar with, which is adoption. Okay. Right? Yeah. You, like I said, you adopted two teenagers, their biological brother and sister. Yes, they are. Right? And um, so you were telling me that now you want to adopt a third child. I'm actually already on process. Well, okay. <laughs> Super fresh. Last week I had my first meeting. Wow. Yes. And my choice was 12 and above teenagers again. Teenagers again. Yeah. Why do you think it's so important for people to adopt teenagers? They also are children. They also need a family. Mm -hmm. and is not as hard as people think mm. because they will get what you put to them. Mm -hmm. The way you educate them and the patient, what they need is patience. We tend to think we need to cover a void that was left on a teenager. That's the reason why sometimes you do see a kid, a problematic kid. A kid, the child will come with a problem. Right. But now it's up to us as parents mm -hmm. to know how to navigate and help their children. Mm -hmm. And they can definitely change because I saw that firsthand with two teenagers. My daughter was 13, my son was 15. Yeah. And they are very well uh, citizens yeah. now. They're like adjusted and they... Very well adjusted. Yeah. My son tells me over and over, Mom... If it wasn't for you, I would not be the man that I am now. Wow, and fantastic. that warms my heart. Yeah, of course. So it's not, it's, it's, I would say, because they are already grown-ups, mm -hmm. it's even easier because you can talk to them. Right. And my children came with a very, very heavy baggage. Yeah. And the baggage is not a problem if you know how to, instead of trying to cover uh, to fill in that void that is was on their lives. Right. So yes, I'm just started the process. I'm very excited. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter if it's a boy or a girl. Oh. Twelve years and older is exactly what I want. I I find that just so courageous, first <laughs> of all. <laughs> it's just so courageous of somebody. Because I, like I was telling you, I feel like people want to adopt when it's a baby or like two years old or three years old. They don't want to adopt a teenager. There's so much stigma around adopting an older child. Yeah. yeah. Um, I believe as, uh, as humans, we tend to, to think that we can imprint our way of living in a baby. Mm -hmm. But that also can happen. We can also shape a teenager. Mm. So it's not, um, it's not as challenging as everybody thinks. But it's unknown. Yes, it is unknown for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's amazing once again. And, um, and I wanted to ask you, you also, you do things all over the world, right? You were in a kettlebell competition just recently. Where was that again? Uh, this time I was in South Korea. In Seoul. South Korea, in yes. Seoul, South Korea. Yeah. And uh, how was that experience? It was amazing. <laughs> yes, it was amazing. Um, I, 
is a awards competition. There were 31 countries, uh, uh, about 400 athletes. Yeah. And this is my third time competing with the U.S. team, uh -huh. USA team. And it was amazing because kettlebell sports mm -hmm. is a is a sport that can be done. There's no limit of age. Right. There were, and again, going back to the age, men of 70, 80 years old wow. competing at the kettlebell competition. It was a great competition for mm -hmm. me. I see that um, my skills are getting more refined. Mm -hmm. I use, I am strong, but the, with the kettlebell sports, strength is not paramount. The most important is the technique. Mm -hmm. And I, I started to get there now. Mm -hmm. It's a work like forever while I'm doing kettlebell, but it's, it's rewarding. Because yeah. each time there's one little part that I start to understand, my body picks up. Yes, yes. So it's a, it's a beautiful experience. I loved being there with the team, yeah. <laughs> nice. And I know that you also are a runner, right? You do I marathons? Run marathons. Yeah, yes. you do the New York Marathon yes. every year. Yes. Right? Yeah. How is it uh, the latest marathon that you did was in November, I believe, yeah, right? Yeah, it was November. Yeah. yeah. How does that compare to the first one you ever did? Oh, night and day. My <laughs> first marathon was uh, 1999, right after I had a, an accident, the right. ceiling fell on, into my leg. Oh my goodness. So yeah. I went to the marathon knowing that I was not going to finish. Mm -hmm. I told myself I'm going to do only 18 miles. Mm. When I got to 18, I was still fine. I decided to do 20 and I finished walking. And I was limping for two weeks. <laughs> and, wow, yeah, that's and terrible. And I was asking, why? on the word was I doing that. Yeah, yeah. And then I decided to do again. But the reason why I did it was the motivation. The motivation. After my accident, a doctor told me, you can, you're never going to be able to run again. Mm. Because he told me I, have nev I had never run before, I decided to do that one thing he told me I could not do, run. So I did my first marathon. Compared to this one, this was nothing. After I finished, I was ready to do my workout and I was working already. Yeah. I was fine. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's I'm, I'm, I wish, you know, when I grow up, I want to be like Ivani. So, yes. <laughs> um, so before we go, I know it's, uh, we, we could talk for like another two hours, but it's only a half hour show. The title of the show is I Am, right? So if you had to define yourself, Ivani, how would you finish this sentence? I am? I am motivation. I am, um, I am a, a power, but I also am gentle. Hmm. I got it. Yeah, <laughs> that's all. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for being no, here. Thank everybody. you very much for having me. Yeah, it was. I'm sure that people are going to be inspired. Uh, you know, I'm inspired every time I talk to you or that I see what you're up to on like social media. You know, I see the pictures, <laughs> everything. It's amazing. So thank you once again for being here. No, thank you for having me. It was an honor. Oh, thank <laughs> you. And uh, for everybody watching the show, we will be back next week with a new episode. And I hope you all enjoyed it. So see you next week.